this is really clever. You can see you're, you're a different generation, Lawrence, all together. <laughs> <laughs> great, great to see it. I'm excited now about your work, I have to say. So do you, want to, do you want to begin and give me a, a guided tour and talk to me about, I suppose, your, your, your interests and what inspires you? And I, I picked up from the other day and, and, and I'm on and off. What I'm doing is, as well as I'm taking notes on each of the artists and I visit the, your, you know, your website as well. But the lovely thing about this is that um, I was supposed, obviously, to be in Oklahoma and get a, an opportunity to visit the, the um, studios. But actually, I think this might work out better because it's an initial introduction. And hopefully, if everything works out well, it could be 2021. I get I get over to see to see to meet you all, but to see the, to see your work, it, it will be lovely. And who knows what opportunities there will be between now and then, you know. So this is great. So thank you very much, Susan, for the opportunity. Okay. Uh, well, I can start by tell, uh, describing how I got started and everything, and then I can show you some of the work that can go in that order. Yeah. Uh, so about. Many years ago when I was in college, I went to, well, I had a friend that had a little iPod Nano, you know, a little uh, music device. It was so beautiful, covered up with jewels. And I thought, that's really cool. How'd you do that? She's from uh -huh. Japan and she said that she did it herself and she got the materials from ABC Craft across from Tenoji Zoo in Osaka, her own town. Yeah. And it, I happened to be going to Osaka that summer for vacation and I went there bought the same materials and um, I had a friend that was living there that showed me how to do it and at the time it was a trend called deco then uh, it's still kind of happening and it's where you decorate your electronics mainly your cell phone with rhinestones and what do you call it deco d-e-n deco den and it is a it's an English Japanese fusion word that okay. combines decoration denwa Dinwa means phone, but also the din in dinwa means electronics. So that's kind of a prefix used for electronic things. Din shiji show is electronic dictionary. Yes. Din ki is electricity. So it's um, it's a thing that a lot of people did with their phones. So if you see this magazine here, yes. This is see the young lady has her phone covered yes. in jewels and yes. This book is full of ideas of decorating your electronics with rhinestones, lace, uh, yes. plastic candy parts, all types of yes. <laughs> embellishments. Yes. So, so it's perceived as a very decadent way of, of I suppose, individual, you know, um, celebrating your individuality, I suppose, for your, you know, for your phone and, and um, yeah. Right. So, um, so that was... Uh, that was what sparked it. Initially, I had a real boring cell phone at the time, and I think everyone did. We all have flip phones. I'm looking for something in particular here. But, yes. Yeah. Uh, the first device that I ever did was a Nintendo DS, and uh -huh. that's a little portable video game system. Uh, I got it around here somewhere. Uh -huh. oh, there it is. Okay, so together she showed me how to take the glue, place it onto the surface, then get tweezers, not, not tweezers, a uh, toothpick. Yes. And dip a little bit of the glue onto the toothpick so that the end of it's sticky, pick up the rhinestone, yeah. put it onto the surface, and it'll stay on the surface that has glue on it because there's more glue on that than on the tip of the toothpick. Yes. And this was the very first thing that I did back in 2000, maybe seven or uh -huh. six. Yes, and yes. <laughs> Meticulous. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, it took it took quite a bit, and I'm glad to still yeah. have it because this is the beginning of all of it. Yes. Yeah. This was back before smartphones, so all the phones were flip. You would put it on the phone itself, and not on a case like you would now. Yes. So you're pretty much yes. uh, dedicated to it once you get it done. Mm -hmm. And uh, I came back, did it for myself, did it for some friends, and I didn't really charge for it. I just charged for materials and. It was just a hobby. I didn't think anything of it. And people were saying, yeah, this is art. You should, you should sell it. <laughs> uh -huh. Uh -huh. And then I started um, doing phone cases. After time went by, uh, smartphones came out, and you could get a case that you could take off, and you had something yes. to sell yes. separately. And these are old iPhone 4 cases Yes. that I did. One of the first ones that I did was this one. I really liked it a lot. Okay. 
questions for my. Uh, could be it could be a, a COVID as well. <laughs> It what? could be. It could be. There's, there's something about the coronavirus. The, the, there's an organic. <laughs> there's an organic aspect to it. You know. Uh huh. Yes. <laughs> so, um, let me show you. I share my screen a bit. One second. Okay. Well, oh, these are great. Great. <laughs> uh huh. Okay. So okay. these are some examples that I've seen online of Japanese-style dekoden. Uh, the yes. iPod at the lower left, the phone uh -huh. case on the right, the phone in the middle at the bottom, and then at the top there's a digital camera, which I've done a couple. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And uh, but after doing the phone cases, I I was kind of disappointed that the new iPhone comes out, and my friend asked me for another one. And although they paid for the materials, and at that time yes. the case itself, yes. I felt it was such a waste that there's this kind of forced obsolescence that comes with the things that I create. You have to throw it away yes. because a new version comes out when I spend uh -huh. so much time on it. <laughs> so uh -huh. I wanted to do something more permanent. And since people were calling it art, I thought, well, this isn't art. Art hangs on the wall, right? Uh -huh. And I thought, well, it can hang on the wall. I got uh -huh. sheets of plexiglass. Since I was familiar with working on plastic, that was what I used as a canvas. So I got uh -huh. black plexiglass, put jewels on it, and uh, create designs on top of it. And this was yes. the second piece, two-dimensional piece they ever created. After, after finishing it, that's 12 by 12 in size. After finishing uh -huh. it, I uh, went to a frame shop, got it framed, and I'm thinking, now what? So I go online and Google literally how to become an artist. And uh -huh. the answers were simple. Uh -huh. uh, all of them kept saying, join the local arts organizations, search for calls for entries. And that's something that, although we understand it as artists, if you're not an artist, you wouldn't know that you would need to Google call for artists or call for entries yes. to, to look for yes. how to put in some artwork. Yeah, yeah. yeah so and I suppose I've, the other thing, the other thing as well, Lawrence, is that um, because of technology, there is, there's pretty much, there's nothing that you can't access, yeah. you know, I went to bake a banana cake last night and I just put, put up the, the screen about how to do it. And, it, you know, I would have never, ever thought of doing that before, you know. So literally what you're doing is you're, open up, you're opening up a, 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 a whole kind of, literally a Pandora's box in terms of, I'm thinking of, of what you're creating in terms of making things precious, even, even though they may be discarded. And, right. um, and the fact the organic aspect of, you know, starting off with one little thing and how it's progressed, mm -hmm. you know. So we can see you're into into decoration by what you're wearing as well, and a uh, pattern and um, a pattern and colors important to you. Uh, with the work that I've created so far, I don't really use much variety in color. The most you'll see are three different colors in one piece. I'm trying to move away from it, but yeah. usually there's a background color and then another accent color. So black yeah. or white will be the background of most of the work. Okay. So eventually I'll be incorporating more color, but the way I have been doing that lately is using iridescent rhinestones. Yes. Uh -huh. so they are kind of still one color, but... Um, but how the light captures them then can change. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, these are some earlier works that I focused a lot on the detail. I use very small rhinestones. Each of those uh -huh. are three millimeter in size. Yes. Except for when you go out, I have a mixture of sizes so they can fit in perfectly. Uh huh. Without causing yeah. gaps or making it look too um, patterned. Yeah. Yeah. Now, um, okay. After when I went online and found that you just enter art or uh, join art organizations and find call for entries, I entered the Paseo Arts Association's annual show. That's every mm -hmm. February. You just have to become a member. And uh, all that involves is paying a yearly fee of, I think, $35 or, or $40. Enter that yeah. into the uh, application fee, and you get an email back saying that you're in the show if, you, if your piece was accepted. And yes. it, was, it was very excited, very validating to, to have that experience. And, and um, for the following it's month, great it's, for your, it's, great for, it's great for your confidence as well, too, isn't it? To be part of something and see it then endorsed and 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 exhibited. Right, 
And uh, the next month, I believe it was the small art show. And that was also with Paseo. That was when I sold my first piece. And the moment was really exciting because I had a couple of classmates and I'm like, hey, I'm in an art show. Come check it out. And we went in, looked at it, looked at all the other works. And then we went outside. While we're outside, we're watching um, inside the window. And then the lady at the working there puts the red sticker next to it. Oh, uh-huh. And then I'm like, hey, what does that mean? <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't know what it means that it's just sold. Yeah. And like, yeah. I don't know. Like, they don't know because they, they're not, they've never been to an art show either. And it's, mm-hmm. they put the red sticker on it. And then moments later, they're bagging up the piece and they're taking it home. I found out later that they took it home that day because they were in from out of town. And so it had to go with them that night instead of staying for the Yes. Yes. But, um, yes. But uh-huh. yeah, that was, that was, it was pretty cool. I was excited. And uh-huh. a few months later, I wound up in, I wound up having my own uh, solo exhibition at 1219 Creative uh, in Oklahoma City, which, yes. which isn't around anymore. But it was, uh, it was my first show and great turnout, good sales. I found that I could sell jewelry and these little phone charms back when phones had the little uh, plug, you know, for the headphone jack, the newer yeah, ones, yeah. a lot of the newer ones don't have it, but I made a lot of these little charms that you could uh, hang from it. Mm-hmm. And those were, those were good and easy, easy to sell for people that wouldn't be able to purchase the, the wall art. Mm-hmm. I eventually met the owner of studio six in Paseo. It's a, it's a gallery that was started a, a few years ago, started by six uh, women artists in Oklahoma, and one of them, Sue Ma Sullivan, uh, I met, and they have guest artists every month. Uh-huh. She said, oh, yeah, I love your work, but the wall space is for the resident artist, and when we have guest artists, they're usually three-dimensional. So uh, if you were to have some more three-dimensional work, including the jewelry, that would be great, and that's what caused me to move to three-dimensional work. Uh-huh. And so the two that you see pictured here are um, part of me moving out of the, the box of, of 2D work and jewelry into now three-dimensional work while I would find yes. uh, objects <laughs> and services and use them as the base for, for my work. And uh-huh. here is, here's one. This, if you've seen those decorative, uh, shiny decorative balls that you, someone has in a boat on top of their dining room table. I don't know if they decorate the same way over there. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. But I, I saw that, saw this slick, glossy, plasticky looking finish on it and thought that would be a great surface to cover and make an orb. So I, uh-huh. so I got a bunch of them spray painted in black and uh-huh. started and did my thing on it. Yeah. Yeah. And of course the way the color, the, co- the light is reflecting, they're, they're actually very, very powerful. You see, when when um, when I see those, I don't know whether you're familiar with the artist Alexander McQueen. He's a fashion designer. He died shortly. He died as very very Years young. I, I, yeah, and I went to see his exhibition, which was unbelievable. Just, I mean, the man was a genius, absolute genius. And when I look at those pieces that you've done, and I can, they're almost like um, fashion fashion pieces that you could wear or have in some way, you know, on your head or as a piece of armature you know like a a, 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 um, a piece like that and uh, there are a number of um there's a number of Irish artists as well and fashion designers who work you know on colors and things that can be um you know like a fashion piece that is detachable with the way there's lots of these ornate um colors that you can wear you know as a piece of jewelry but it's also something that can be um no matter what outfit you have on you yeah. can wear it you know and and the other thing as well with, with headgear, you know, the whole idea of you literally can put anything on your head now with, if you've got the right kind of um, piece. But um, one of the, the designers that I did work with before, uh, uh, she made a piece completely out of zips. And I, I'll, try and get a, I'll try and get an image of it for, for you. Her name is Bernie Murphy. She's a textile designer based in Donegal. I'll send you, I'll send you the, the details. And um, she did all of these zips. You know, uh, she used to work in a, a, a factory, and uh, so she had she had a lot of the skills. So she's a fashion designer at the minute, and she then made these cre- made these creations, 
and we we actually suggested to contact Lady Gaga because you know it was so out of this world, you know. So so I mean, people are tr people are trying so hard to be different, mm. and in fact, everybody ends up looking the same. You know what I mean? It's because <laughs> of the the fashion kind of movement and all that as well. And um, there's 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 two things that come to mind. If you give me two minutes, I'm gonna I'm gonna get it for you. Yeah, sure. Because um, sometimes if there are collaborations between a, a fine artist and a fashion designer, or say there's a fashion show where there's a big kind of an opportunity to to do wearable art. And the first thing that I was going to say that that um, when I saw what you did, um, these pieces are. Um, to show you this this is a piece it's it's a i don't know whether you can see it it's actually like a color can you see can you see that uh, if you raise it a bit yes yeah so i mean whatever way you want to wear it or you know you can imagine you can imagine it's the sort of thing that could be made in such a way i used to, I used to design wedding dresses and headgear you know i'm not i do i, I don't make the actual um pieces but i would design pieces and then this is a piece, this little piece here is um, a Christmas decoration. It's a little, uh, um, can you see the, it's like a little, a little a peacock. Yes. Yeah, and it's just, it's, it's made out of polystyrene. But when I, I bought it, I thought it actually would make a very good fascinator or, or hat as well. And then this is um, a piece of jewelry from my late sister. Um, I thought it was an interesting piece because it's just like baubles and bits of glass, you know. And again, you know, depending on what you're going to or what you're doing or who you're dealing with, I mean, it could be somebody that you could even be um, identifying some performance artist, somebody, and, and you know, send them information about your work. You know, there's nothing to stop you. Um, you've seen all of these sort of things before, Nathan. I'm not, I'm not showing you anything that you haven't already seen. But again, you know, with the actual hair band idea you literally could have that orb on 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 someone's head you know um this type of thing you know again this idea of putting you know your pieces on on things that are already already made because what struck me with the um even even glasses you know there's loads of things i'm thinking of elton john in particular but there are loads of things when i see what you did initially with um you know the the phone I, I I I chose that color that cover because I didn't want anybody to steal it on me because my phone was so precious to me. And yet I know from my nieces and nephews and friends' children that the, the the whole idea of an identity is really really important. And the more ornate something is, the better, you know. But when I look, even if you look around your house and and think of objects, because you can see your eyes moving around and, and scanning. There could already be things and objects that you have, or things that you could purchase that could be the ground on which you actually decorate and add add the pieces. There was a friend of mine who had um, her wedding bouquet was an orb with uh, covered with um, sponge and then covered with satin, and then she had about fifty brooches from her from her aunts that made her. They were the flowers of her. That was her bouquet. So I'm even thinking of you know charity shops and you know what you can go and, and get um, what seems precious that could be discarded by someone, but you know you know that phrase um, someone's um, rubbish is somebody else's gold treasure. <laughs> you know this idea, yeah, treasure. You know, so you, you, sometimes we have to mine deep and see the preciousness and things that that we could get. I mean that piece of jewelry there is you can see the back of it. Um, um, you see? Yes. And another friend got me a piece, and it was all, um, all pins. You know the, the uh, nappy pins. You know the the the, the pins that you get. They're, they're like uh, for a, a children's. Um, they're like say, a safety pin. Have you heard yes. of a safety pin? You know that idea. These um, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I, I I got a bracelet once from a friend, and she she they were about these. They were I think it was from India. There was about ten of them. You know, all all joined together with wire and then decorated with tiny, tiny little beads. You know, so what what you're doing is really, really labour intensive. And if you have to design the structure on which the piece, the the rhinestones go on, that adds to your work. 
Whereas if you get something that's already in existence, and then you go to embellish or to decorate or to create, you know, um, you know, whether it's masks, you know, whether it's something that can hang in a wall, whether it's something that you wear, whether it's something that you carry, whether it's, you know, a handbag or, a, you know what I mean? Whether it's embellished jeans. A friend of mine, um, she uh, is involved in fashion and I went into her office one time and she had a pair of these tiny jeans that, that she used to wear before she had her first baby. And, um, but she knew that she would never be able to wear them again. So what she did was she got um, this artist to paint the jeans, to paint, um, a, a, you know, a, a series of like a like a, a portrait, and and so she has the jeans framed, you know, a, a, on the wall of her of her fashion studio. So can you imagine painting something, whether it's an old denim jacket or a pair of jeans or a pair of trainers, painting something that's precious, but but maybe worn. But then revisiting that, and I was thinking the other day that if we all put together a time capsule of what the coronavirus meant to us, you know, what this time, it's like an incubation period, you know, it's a period to retreat, it's like a, a, a precious um, haven, you know, and a, and a sanctuary that you could create something really, really precious. So suddenly the ordinary things become so, so much more, our phones are so precious to us now because without them, we can't connect with people. Um, you know things like you know to have a, a cup of, co of coffee um, is is um, certainly to share it with somebody else is a major you know a, re a major um, treat because you know if you're living on your own you're you're doing you're you're on your own and that's it. so it's about whether it's you could look at the symbolism of some of the things that are important to you personally and you could look at the technique that you've got which is ornamentation and highly decorative pieces and um, actually be really, really clever about um, making the, the ordinary really, really extraordinary by the way you treat the surface mm. with the textures and the colors that you've got. Yeah, I think I can show you more about the process uh, here in a second too. Yeah. I have, um, yeah, that is a photo of it. So you can see a little bit better the detail in this image. Do you see the yeah. pictures? Okay. And yeah, that's fantastic. Uh, I mean, that, that that could be life size. That could be a piece of public art. You know, um, it could be a, 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 a you know you could wear it. It could be you know they're, they're, it's such a powerful piece. And the way the image is, I mean, it's a really good photograph. Did you take that photograph yourself? I wish Anyone? I did. <laughs> no, I, I didn't take the photograph myself. There is a photographer here named John Jernigan who took that photo. He's a photographer that works with uh, Oklahoma Today Magazine and the Daily Oklahoman, or the Oklahoman uh, newspaper. Uh, he's, uh -huh. uh, con he's contracted by them. And he took this photo when Oklahoma Today Magazine did a story on me and they sent him to d take some of the photos. And then I contacted uh -huh. him later to, to purchase them. Uh-huh. So it strikes me, um, th th these, are, these are fabulous. It strikes me as well. Um, uh, Lawrence, that I, I'm sure you have seen the photographs of the coronavirus at the minute. I mean, they look beautiful. I mean, the the imagery of the the um, the pattern and the, the color and the shapes, and that actually reminds me. There's something about that that looks almost viral, you know, in, in a in a positive way. And I'm just thinking, you know, the, what was the inspiration for that piece there? Did you did you have the pattern in mind before you started, or did it evolve? What was the what was the journey like for you? So I, I like the, the image of, I like roots and tentacles. I just like this um, flowing, those lines, because it suggests motion. Yes. And you can see in the earlier piece, this one here, that looks a little bit more like the coronavirus. It's, yes. It, it has tentacles and suggests motion. Even the rhinestones sparkling as you move around it, it also suggests motion. So it looks kinetic. Yes. Without being so. Uh-huh. There's an artist um, that I know um, and I've mentioned before, Susan, a, a guy called Stephen Lowry, and I, I'll try and get his contact details for you. And he, he works in, I think it was a form of like marine biology, um, but he actually um, worked from his inspiration for his photographs, he, he was a digital photographer, was that he was looking at, um, uh, 
you know, the, the um, close-up photographs or, or, or um, images that were biological, if you know what I mean, that they were actually organic to start off with. And he created some really, really fascinating um, artworks out of them. But there's something, you know, when you talk there about the free-flowing and the organic aspect of that, um, coupled with the choice of colour and the iridescent aspect of the, the materials you use, because the light capturing um, is very, very powerful in that. And then the way it's, it's set on those little, is that glass or is that silver, the little piece it's set on? Uh, that is uh, metal, the, the surface that it's on? Yeah, yes. Yeah, it's a little uh, metal stand. Uh -huh. Lovely. Um, so, so, and then this, what's the background in this? Is this, is this um, polystyrene or is it plastic? No, it's uh, like clay or something. It's a okay. mannequin display. It's a sunglass display. Like oh, yes. The, yeah, so yes. that's why the top of the head was flat. And yes, I ordered it. Well, I noticed that people were responding very much to the, there was a pan piece that was black and red. Uh, I sold it very quickly. As soon as I finished it, I had a show a few days after and it went. But a lot of people just loved that image. And I noticed that people seem to respond more to works that have the human form. And yes. So I thought, well, they will definitely respond more to a face or a head. Uh -huh. And I uh -huh. looked for a mannequin display head. And they all looked the same, but the, the mannequin for the sunglasses was unique because it was cut off yes. you know, at the bottom, at the lip, and at the top of the head. So yes. I found that to be a lot more unique and not so recognizable. I tried my best not to use materials that people can go, oh, yeah, I've seen one of those that you know, the local craft store or something. I want to find mm -hmm. something unique. Mm -hmm. So I will go to antique stores usually to find those types of things. Mm -hmm. So I, I got this one and um, it was already black. So I don't, didn't have to spray paint it black like I do everything else before I start on it. Yeah. And as I started working on it, I thought to, I started with the eyes to mm -hmm. make sure that that detail was very clean and mm -hmm. the lines didn't go out. Then the forehead to make sure that that, piece was centered in the middle yes and then filled in everything else there's another side that has a few earrings going down uh -huh. and a tiger's eye post at the uh -huh. very end of it yes little pieces at the top are made of glass and there's a part in the hair so they go opposite directions very good uh -huh. so the lights that uh, when whatever angle the light is um would you can see how it would look very very different mm -hmm. um and then how long would it take you to do something like that uh, that one took me about a couple of months. And as I work, you know, full time, I can only do it uh, nights and weekends and when I'm not doing yeah. something else then. So mm -hmm. I uh -huh. haven't really been disciplined enough to start a stopwatch and stop it to know exactly how long it takes me to finish work since it happens over, over a few months or a few weeks, uh -huh. but it, it didn't take too long. I really enjoyed this piece that when it's named Grace, my mother saw it and said, I was going to say Grace Jones. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh, uh -huh. That's right. My mother saw it and th thought it reminds her of Grace Jones, and so I named it such. Yes, up, up to the bumper, I think. Is the, 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 I'm just thinking of there was Pulled a bumper, um, yeah, yeah. The, the um, because when I'm looking at that, I'm thinking of masks as well, you know, and this idea of you know the way at the minute the whole thing is in the, this part is you know the face of the mask, you know. Mm -hmm. Whereas when you think of some of the really decorative masks which cover your eyes, um, and that can be really quite um theatrical, um. That uh, you know, it's almost it almost reverses the very part of our of our of our um, face of that we are, are hiding now is the is the part that the, the, the eye masks are, and you can buy those. You can buy little plastic eye masks, and then you can add and do a whole series of, of things. But it just strikes me. It was saying to Susan earlier today that there is an artist, a well known artist, who's very very much influenced by the political um, changes over the years in Ireland and. She is revisiting the whole area of the mask again, you know, because in, in, in years ago it been very much affiliated with terrorism, whereas now it's about health and safety. But she's actually playing on that again. She's revisiting that as part of um, her work. But I'm just thinking that, that when I look at your work, I see celebrity, I see um, a fashion, I see um, precious things, you know. And 
if when you said they're you know they were going to antique shops and and I'm thinking sometimes of you know in charity shops as well we can, can pick up some really amazing things and I'm thinking of is the piece here is that an earring the one that's in is that an earring that's in the center of her head uh, on the side of the head no no in the, above the nose okay no in the very middle that is just a um, glass cabochon and I put the rhinestones around it in that formation uh, myself oh, right. it's not it's not a, it's not a piece of jewelry yes yes and then the, the pieces here what what are they are they the, the so, studs? The, uh -huh. those three cubes are bra just brass cubes that are uh -huh. standalone and the lines are made of chain they're you know chain from necklaces that I've cut to yes. make that pattern and glue it to the side uh-huh and there are two uh -huh. little star rhinestones here around the. Can you see the cursor moving? Yes, I can. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah. Yeah, these, these two are just uh, star rhinestones. Uh huh. And, and that obviously was professionally taken as well, or did you take that, uh, Lawrence, that photograph? Uh, I, had, um, I had someone take it. Yeah, I have it, not the same person, but uh, Kelsey Carper took it. Uh -huh. She is a, she's a local artist that was the. Uh, executive director of Oklahoma Visual Arts Coalition for a while and mm -hmm. at the time that she was uh, working there she was a they were doing photography for artists so that you can yes. enter the shows you would pay a certain amount per piece and uh, she would take the photos and so I kept in contact and asked her eventually later on if she could do more and so she took this one uh, afterwards when she began to run a co-op studio mm -hmm. but uh, mm -hmm. Of these two photos, uh, there's one that she took and one that I took, and I don't know which was which. But after Very a while, good. I got my setup to where I, <laughs> where I yes. can take my own. But you know what? That's great because one of the things is, especially if you're selling your work, is to catalog or certainly archive your work from the beginning. You know that you remember right through. It's great that you have your your first you know phone piece as well, because if you I was saying that to to, um, to uh, Mark as well at the beginning of last week too and some of the other artists that the whole idea of do you imagine a timeline of the pieces that you've created and started and then how because you've no idea where this is going to go you've no idea even the scale that this could end up you know this could be a piece of public art you know um whether it's the orb or whether it's the mask or you know there's a whole range of things but um but it's lovely to have them to have them um Catalogued, but to have good quality photographs, that's a major, major thing, a, a, a major clue. Because when you then are approaching galleries, or when members of the public are looking to see, you know, work in your, you know, on your website, or you know, the sort of pieces that you've done, then it, it gives them a sense of ownership as well to see a really good quality piece. You know, um, Lawrence, um, Lawrence and Noel, I. I'm conscious of the time, and I know that we were a little late starting. Are you okay, Lawrence and Noel, to go on to maybe yeah. ten past one? Sure. Yeah. Or pre -long? Yes. Yeah, I'm I'm fine all the way till one thirty. Okay. I want yeah. I want her to be able to see what you're working on now and how you've evolved from even that. Mm -hmm. So there's there's Great. for you to see, which is really wonderful. So lovely. Thank you, Susan. Uh -huh. Yeah, so I do have the grace piece here, so you can see the other side. Oh, Back yes. The other uh -huh. ear. And I have a few gold rhinestones yeah. around the top of the ear, and this piece right here is tiger's eye. Yes. And yes. try to use a semi-precious stone as much as possible. This doesn't have any, aside from that mm -hmm. one piece. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. down, and let me see if there are any other photos here on the slideshow before we move into the... It used to be the studio, but now it turned into storage. Uh huh. I wonder if that was placed on a glass mirror and a photograph taken. It would look as if it's a complete face. I'm not sure. I would have to try it. You know. I'm not sure if this is in the way, but this is. Let me slide oh, yeah. you guys over. This yeah. is at. Art Now, that is Oklahoma Contemporary's annual fundraiser. This is back okay. in 2017. Uh -huh. it, was a, it was a great show. I didn't realize how big of a deal the event was until I, <laughs> until I got there. I, I was approached by the curator and then eventually got you know, an email and inviting me to the show. 
I joined it and told some friends like, yeah, I'm going to be in the show car art now. And they're like, really? That's great. Those tickets are real expensive. <laughs> like a uh-huh. hundred dollar tickets to just attend the show. So is that brilliant? That's fantastic. Yeah. So I was um, really blown away. And once I got there, the bars open and everything, I just <laughs> never been to such a ritzy uh-huh. event. Uh-huh. And uh, I captured this picture from the event from, from a video that was uploaded afterwards from their site. And I want to show this very interesting part of the piece at the lower left. Yes. You saw it earlier in the slideshow, but you couldn't see how it has a part where it starts to go three dimensional. I love that. I love that idea. Yes. It trails all the way out to labyrinth and then um, just one piece turns into a kind of like a rosary chain. Yes, and, I can see that. that. That's, that's beautiful. And this that's piece, really lovely that is uh, brighter at the upper right corner. That's the very uh-huh. first two-dimensional piece I ever did. It's uh, four by six in size. Uh-huh. That was on a piece of plexiglass that I had cut. I, I bought it, the plexiglass at the um, hardware store, had them yes. cut it to that size so it could fit into a frame that I already purchased. Yes. That's, you know, because that's four by six is standard size. And uh-huh. um, it turned out pretty great, but if I wanted to get into a nicer show, I would have to get a custom-made frame that looks better. I use metal frames on all of these uh-huh. because uh-huh. if I use wood, I feel like it would take away from the modern. I think you're right. <laughs> yeah. And the other lovely thing about it as well, though, that's a lovely size as well, uh, Lawrence, because not everybody has a huge wall. And because of the preciousness of the pieces, there's something about the, 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 the size and the scale you know, um, and I love the intriguing aspect of the piece coming down and coming off. Um, uh, some of the paintings, the original paintings that I would have done, I would have um, burnt into the, fr- into the frame um, as if it was like an extension of the painting. Somebody. The piece and what you've done there with the, the beads coming out, like the rosary right round the labyrinth, that's a lovely, it's a lovely idea. And I'm, but I'm intrigued as well as the shadow cast below the oh, yeah. shadow as well so um, there's a lovely interplay of light with that as well yeah uh, let's see don't think i have any no nope, just me it shows <laughs> uh-huh. okay and there is yeah there's another piece that was taken by that photographer it's a yes. mirror it is very it's one of my favorites uh but it is it was supposed to be in a show last yeah, late last month, that's been postponed. It's a fundraiser for Allied Arts, Oklahoma, OKC. And uh, that piece right there is Tiger's Eye. This is a mixture mm-hmm. of lapis lazuli, pyrite, lapis lazuli, and then these five here are Tiger's Eye. The same, actually the same cut as the one that was on Grace's ear. Mm-hmm. But you see again with the tentacles and the... Mm-hmm. Those, um, and jellyfish parasite looking yes out in there uh, are this, you familiar with are, are you familiar with the work of um gaudi of who and and gaudi in, in barcelona and um, no. his work he, he does a lot of mosaic work um again i i'll um i'll send you some uh, some links of work um because there, again there's an organic quality of uh, what you've done there sorry i interrupted you were going to say something about the mirror oh yeah um I got this from an antique store. Uh, actually, I don't know if I would call it an antique store. This guy just gets a whole bunch of junk and, and sells it. Yeah. But this yeah. was originally the letter O from a sign somewhere. Some building had you know, their name up there, and this was the letter O. That's why it's not a perfect circle or oval. Uh-huh. It's the letter O. And I got it. It's plastic. I went to a craft store and got a big round mirror and glued it to the back of it. And then uh-huh. got a strong bond that would allow me to put some D-rings on it to hang it with the wire. And that's how I got the surface. But it makes a great mirror. Yes, it does indeed. Uh, and then yeah. that's a stand. The, the stand that you have is, is um, the mirror can hang on the wall, but that's a stand for the exhibition purposes. Is that it for the photographs? The that, stand, that stand was there for the photograph. It is, uh, you see the loop at the bottom, there's a, the wire goes up and has a hook. So it would be for hanging some jewelry or something. I usually use it for showing the clutch purses. Yes, very good, very, very good. And let's see if that is the last photo. I will 
move you back to the other room. Let's go. I'll be right back. You'll mm -hmm. see me show up on the other camera here in a second. Okay, great. I am back. <laughs> okay, brilliant. Okay, so this is, this used to be the studio. I'm not uh -huh. sure how clear. Yeah, okay, got it. I see the camera that shows me yeah. what you see. This yeah. is where it yeah. works, but eventually the work got too big to where it won't fit on this little table anymore. Yes. And let me get you closer here. Oh yes, I see all then these this is your source materials then. Yep, this is where I keep the rhinestones or print out labels. Uh-huh. Inside of these uh, plastic test tubes. So I take out uh -huh. the bit that I need, put them inside the triangular tray and close it back so they don't yeah. spill all over the place. Uh-huh. You're very, you're very, um, it's, it, you're very organized. Um, I suppose you have to be because each of those are precious. You don't want to lose, you don't want to be out of fortune, you know, um, losing materials because they, they you know, they all add up, you know. Yeah, they do. They do add up eventually. Uh, uh -huh. I'm not sure if it's too dark in here, but uh, this credenza is where I keep the other things that are not rhinestones. And this is kind okay. of the exciting part where your imagination can go. Yes. Okay. Uh-huh. That's a great cabinet. <laughs> Lawrence, great. I love the color of it. Yeah, I got it from an antique mall. Uh-huh. I think it's from the 90s or 80s, as the this is can probably tell you. Uh -huh. And I got this um trash bin to match it <laughs> yes. somewhere else. Brilliant, uh-huh. Okay, so when I get a few of something that is like small and precious, I keep it inside of these little cases that used to That's keep great. Uh, screws and bolts that were for computer parts. I got them from, from work. These are things mm -hmm. that were That's brilliant because you, you can see at a glance then what's actually in there. That's great. That's a great way of, of um, keeping things together. Yeah. Now they are some of these are too small for the quantity of whatever I have. So uh -huh. I got these recently from one of the ladies at Studio Six, and these were uh -huh. slide holders for you know the yeah slides. Yes, for slides. Yes. And they keep a good amount of, of material, so I don't I don't wind up using multiple partitions of um, of these cases. Yeah. Yeah. Here's some more. These are the odd-shaped rhinestones. Yes. That I wouldn't really put in the tube because I don't have that many of them. Uh huh. And this is the good stuff. Uh huh. The found material, the found objects. Yes. Oh, lovely. And and, and appropriate for the title of the gallery. <laughs> right. Uh-huh. Yes. So these yeah. are the things that were from estate sales, uh -huh. garage sales, yeah. thrift stores, old bits and ends, some things that um, people have given to me that were like, hey, I lost the pair to this earring. Yes. My grandmother passed. Yes. I got all of her jewelry. Yes. Yeah. I keep all of them here. And some days I'll be working on a new piece and dig in here and find something like, okay, I'll use this yes. thing. And I've had it for years. Yeah. Uh huh. And in a separate bin here, I keep the chains. Yeah. Mm hmm. I have this cool um, little card here that has different rhinestone colors. Yeah. So if I have an idea, I can order online. The color and see what it looks like before it arrives. Excellent, excellent. I collect these center precious stone cabochons, and this one's labradorite. It's a naturally iridescent stone that has a flash to it. Mm hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Oh, that's beautiful. And here's where I keep the other gemstones. I try to keep track of their weight and their their names. I'm not sure if mm-hmm. that focuses well, but yes, I can see that. Yes, them. yeah, yeah. I mean, it's meticulous in terms of what you're doing as well. And I mean, when you think of what you've produced, even out of out of you know one of the the cabinet drawers, it's really quite amazing, you know. And um. And I suppose, I guess, because of the scale that you're working as well, Lawrence, you have to be, you know, that organised because you're, you're, you could waste a lot of time, you know, trying to retrieve and find pieces that are that you want. You know. That's right. Yeah, you and know, I wind up never finding it if I <laughs> if I just have them in a big bucket somewhere. So I do have to uh-huh. keep them apart so I know where everything is. Uh, since yes. I was a kid, I was always into gemstones and. Uh, mineralogy yes so i do still collect a bunch of gemstones yes there's some that i have i have others in other containers but i've never started Uh buying those Uh uh-huh the little head the little head is that made out of clay what is that little face that's actually a local artist named john wolf that's one of Uh uh, his pieces that broke he gave it to me and i'll eventually find a way to do something with their incorporate one of my works yes yes the box, yes, you, you had a, yes. I think that's all for this room. I'll show you what I'm, oh, actually I found something else to show you. Uh-huh. Here's a wall of some older work. Oh, yes, and yes. That, that right there is a clutch purse that I did a few years yes. ago. Yes, uh-huh. And that's that phone case I saw earlier. Uh-huh. Uh, the reflection's not doing this one very good. They're like they're like miniature paintings, um, Lawrence. Huh? They're like little miniature paintings. No, these are just photographs. No, but they, but they look they look just when I'm looking at them oh, on okay. screen. They look, <laughs> yeah, they look like little miniature paintings. Uh huh. This one's my first uh, international sale. This one sold to someone in England. It's a phone yes. case. Uh huh. And I, I, I totally forgot about it actually <laughs> until until uh-huh. this moment. Yeah. But um, that is where I, that's where I keep the work, and this room is where I work. I guess you can uh-huh. see that coming out. Let's yeah. Rotate. So you've got a fair bit of natural light in in, in there in there. Yeah, it's not, not really by choice. These these are windows I can't really cover. cover. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But, but I'm using the work, work at the night when my neck mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, I spend most of the time working at night. And yeah. uh, under this light right here, mm-hmm. this is a piece that I've just finished not too long ago. Oh, yes. And this, inside of this blue area, there are three different blue rhinestones that I've mixed together to use here. And a yeah. couple of them are iridescent. It has a bit of uh, blue and green yeah. to it. And yes. that is intentional because this gemstone here, azurite, has a bit of green in it along with the blue. Yeah. So I want yes. to make it as close as possible. And I have the brass cubes varying in three different sizes. So go from small to large as you go up to the top. And Lawrence, tell us a little bit about your the thought process behind this piece. What was your inspiration? Uh, so the piece that is at the at the gallery right now, mm-hmm. that one is the start or the first of it. I wanted to take some stones and bring out or kind of translate the color into into the rest of it with rhinestones. So it's kind of mixing mm-hmm. the natural stone with the artificial man-made yes. color. Yes. Uh-huh. Here at the bottom, I wound up using pieces of a bracelet that my mother gave me. Yes. And they turn out pretty nicely. I polished, uh, polished them to make them shine a little bit more. Mm-hmm. She is, she's another one of the people that I get broken jewelry from. Yes. And uh, what else do I have? 
This one is the one that I've most recently finished before, before the blue one. Uh -huh. If I have a fundraiser coming up, I don't cover the whole um, space because I'll be donating a bit of the work that's for, not for a uh, fundraiser. Yes. They yes. take a bigger cut. So yeah. I try not yeah. to come into a loss so much with materials. So I will be, um, so I left this empty. However, uh -huh. it turns out that the event that this is for is canceled. Then I'll fill it in more uh -huh. and do more with, with this space here. Yes. Yes. Yeah. This, this very large piece that I've been putting everything on top of is the one that I've been working on for about a year. Uh huh. And is it? Is, it looks like almost like a tabletop. It, it looks as if as it, it could be. Um, what's the material? It's as large as a coffee table, <laughs> but um, uh -huh. it is. It's wood. It's a wooden birch panel. Uh -huh. I started using it recently because plexiglass after you get to a certain size will become really expensive. Yeah, and quite heavy, huh? I imagine too, yeah. Yeah, so um, I had an idea to start using birch panels. Uh, Brian told me where he gets his and I got it, uh, painted it black and then covered it with the varnish to make yes. it glossy. Yes. And the purpose of that is to keep the glue from soaking into the wood and to make mm -hmm. it a lot more like the plastic that I'm used to working on. Yes, yes. And you can see here I, where I tested it to make sure that it stays without coming off. Yes, and yes. And it does. It's a pretty good surface, and I've been using birch board ever since for my uh -huh. two-dimensional work. Do, do you know, um, I mean, that, that would take, I can only imagine that would take a long, long time to, to put together. But what I was going to say, it, it reminds me of... Um, Part of a screen, you know, a screen that you would have in a in a room, a really ornate screen that could you could have like two or three panels. That, oh yeah, um, like a partition. Uh, yeah, yeah, that people would have, you know, want something in their bedroom or in a a, you know, a dining room or you know, there's something very, there's something really, um, something really ornate and precious about it as well. Now, I think Lawrence, too, you know, in saying that, I think that, you know, your time in Japan and even in Korea has influenced your work. You know, you, there is an Asian influence, definitely, I, that I see. Yes. Yes. That was brilliant to be to have time there. I mean, that would have been very informative. How long were you there? Yeah, I lived in, I, lived in, I went to Japan to visit many times, but I lived in South Korea for two and a half years. Uh-huh. And actually these corner pieces on it are actually from Asia and these are usually for furniture, you know, like a uh -huh. Asian furniture decorative yes. corner. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, at the very top of that piece in the middle, mm -hmm. that round that metal piece is a heat sink. That's a computer part that is to dissipate the um, heat away from the processor chip. Mm -hmm. And the fan is usually attached to it. The very top of it is labradorite. Uh, yes. Down here is a tiger's eye bead with yeah. chains connected going to these pyrite pieces. Uh -huh. Going to a computer processor that goes out and leads to these other brass cubes. The chain is not the chain's not um, glued down or anything. Yes. It's it's free hanging and dangle, so uh -huh. if there's but a breeze the quality, on the quality, The quality of the light that you, and the reflections are really very powerful, aren't they? I have multiple sizes so that you'll get different light effects. The smaller rhinestones will give a glimmer and the larger rhinestones will give more of a flash. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So try to mix those a bit to make it more interesting. Uh -huh. Right here, that is a little face on yes. this little hexagonal piece, and there will be a grid uh -huh. of those. And this is why I'm working on them. Yes. I plan to have them all surrounding that one and fill in a bit of the space. Yes. I'll have to count, but it'll be yes. somewhere about 20 of them. Mm hmm. Haven't decided whether or not to make the eyes red in the middle. 
Mm -hmm. And in this, this piece here, the area in the middle, do you notice that it's two different colors? Yes, I did. And I see, I see the lines going through. Yeah, uh -huh. The difference in color is very subtle. If you see the two rhinestones next to each other, you wouldn't really see that they're two different colors. Yes. But when you yes. have them in line like that, you can see the tentacles moving. Yes. Yeah. And also included some little triangular pieces, triangular rhinestones uh -huh. that uh -huh. you have to be looking very closely to notice. The reason that uh, you see I haven't moved all the way from top to bottom or in a certain direction, you see those squiggly lines? Yes. I break them up into areas so I can sit down one day and say, okay, I'm going to finish this area today. Yeah. Or I'm going to finish this, these two tonight. And the reason that the uh -huh. lines are squiggly like that is to keep it from going like in a grid so it doesn't look so rigid. It looks more organic. Yes. No, that's, a, that's actually a very, very good idea. Plus, it's, it's, it's better for your sanity as well, I can imagine, Lawrence, <laughs> yeah. because I think you could be really overwhelmed. Not every, not every artist would have the same methodical, logical way of working, you know, that you could sometimes be really, really overwhelmed. And I, I imagine it's a real test on patience as well. Yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty easy for me to sit here for a long time and do the same thing. I don't know. I don't get tired of it, so... I guess I'm lucky in that way that I don't get bored. But the only yeah. thing that would make it stressful is uh, worrying about a deadline. If this were for a show yes. in particular, then I would yeah. be like, oh no, <laughs> I'm not going to get this done in time. Yes, I think I think deadlines scare, you know, de while deadlines are important, obviously, you know, that they can be overwhelming. And I think, um, you know, even, even now when people are talking about, oh, you've got plenty of time, and then there's the other aspect where there's a sort of a panic too that we'll never get this time back. And even I find myself like the other day, you know, I should be painting, you know, from the first thing in the morning till late at night. And it's not possible to do that. Not the way that I'm thinking at the minute and the things that I'm, I'm doing and I'm, I'm involved in. So um, planning your, your structure and your day is very, very important. What's your, day, your daily structure like? Are you still working, Lawrence, as well? Did you say you're working yep. in the day? Okay, so what, what does, what's your day look like then? Well, I work in IT Lane. Okay, had to leave the uh -huh. uh, phone to leave the meeting. <laughs> so, I went, so I had eight to five jobs. We work like our company clients remotely. So pick um, up. I join a video conference uh -huh. like this with, with the team. We talk for 30 minutes and then we go and fix some of the issues, look at servers, make sure everything's working as those users are also working. And uh, uh -huh. at lunchtime, optional, we can go into a meeting like this and eat lunch together. And after that, uh -huh. uh, around five, yeah, five o'clock, I'm off work. So I have the night to myself uh -huh. where I can work on something or watch a movie, play video games, eat, have another Zoom meeting with uh -huh. friends. Uh -huh. That's what it looks like and now. Are you, are you finding this time tough? Are you finding this time are you are you are you, are you finding this time tough? Um yeah uh, initially yeah. uh -huh. and even before we started our quarantine here shows all the events were canceled or we actually had a quarantine in place so art shows were postponed um, yes yeah and put put off until not even a definite date for when these shows are going to be back on schedule yeah and with that i felt like well what's the point of making yes. my art denying shows to to show them in and then i started wondering well if i if there are no art shows and to show the work and I'm not making any work for the shows. Am I an artist? Am I still interesting if I'm not an artist? I had this kind of a, yes. a down point where I didn't want to feel the motivation and felt depressed about it. And I was saying to Susan before, like glad that we had the meeting soon after. The first meeting we had was after I was feeling that way and motivated me to start working again. Otherwise, I'd probably be working all the way to this point, Susan. Oh. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, I'm glad. I'm glad it's been helpful to connect with everybody. And I really think, you know, I, I wonder too, you know, as a gallerist, this pivot to having a physical space and openings and social events and all of that in the gallery to everything having to be online is, it's a huge amount of work and it's really hard to wrap your mind around it. So that was hard for me. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Absolutely. Yeah, and, and the interaction of the public, you know, um, of, I think Nathan was saying as well about, you know, having used to the people coming to visit your space or to see your work in practice. And then you're thinking, well, what, what's the point? You're, nobody's going to see it. And yet, it's amazing, Nathan, and you have great skills IT-wise. It's amazing the number of artists who are only really discovering the opportunity to go online and to show their work and to consider how they could give tours of their, of their space, how they could talk about improving their practice, how they could connect with artists internationally. I mean, this was so funny. It was, was it last week, Susan? I think we were we talking about I mean, we lost Lawrence. Have we lost him? We, we lost, lost him. him. No, I, I, was just, I was just thinking there, uh, Susan, about when you think that um, you had Eva in, in Saudi Arabia, you in Oklahoma, and, and then, you know, just blow your mind even thinking of the possibilities. You know. know. And do you know for Friday, um, the, my friend in France it has um, an artist in Copenhagen who's coming on. And then I think there's another Irish artist that's, I don't know, it's kind of wild. I lost connection. Uh -huh. Yeah. yeah. You, you okay, Lawrence? We lost you for a wee while. Yeah, I lost just saying. was going to join myself um, from my phone off of the off of the Wi-Fi if, if I wasn't to get reconnected. But uh, last thing that you were saying, this is great uh -huh. how I've been able to, um, you know, keep his presence online and everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the thing with it's Nathan, has had a, Nathan's had a following of private collectors. So he, in general, he's always pre done well, had people kind of subscribe to him and following, even without shows. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, don't, I don't know how much this transitions changed uh, what's happened for him, but uh, he's, he's had a following for, for a bit. It was always well, impressive. And, and Brian he was saying the issue is, you know, he can't meet with them. Right, they can't come over. He can't meet with them. Yeah. You know, even if he had private clients, he can't really meet with them. So, uh -huh. well, I wanted to thank both of you for, um, Noel, for your time and meeting with Lawrence and having this virtual studio visit, and Lawrence for carving this time out of your busy day to share with us about your work. And Noel will um, be available to you to think about connections and, you know, if there are any connections in the UK or in Ireland that might make mm -hmm. sense, you know, artists that you might know. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm just thinking, um, uh, Lawrence, I, I, I'm going to send you over a, a few bits and pieces, but I'm just thinking, I just want to wish you the very best of luck with your work and congratulations. Um, and we, just, we were just saying there when, when we lost you that you've demonstrated today exactly the, 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 the great thing about setting up an opportunity like this to be able to do a gallery tour, to show work, um, and to have the skills. I mean, it was, I only met um, Susan the first time in May last year. So it'll nearly be a year, Susan. I've been know. speaking every Wednesday, every week, sorry, maybe once or twice a week, just on you know, WhatsApp. And then we progressed to Zoom. And um, so now we're doing this. And we were talking then one Sunday evening about, well, maybe we could do virtual tours and maybe we could do, you know, podcasts. And maybe we could do, so anything's possible. You know, and we, when we've got people with your skills and Brian's skills and Mark's skills that have the IT skills as well as creative skills, you don't know where this is going to end up and to think that we are connecting continents you know during all of this it's really it's really quite amazing but i can't help but go back and think from the very first image that you showed me the orb that if you look at the patterns created by the coronavirus and that um that, that, that actually there's, there's something organic about that um movement that i think um too could could inspire what you're you're already doing yeah I could. Well, the the first orb is actually um, it's called Orb One uh, Parasite. is is meant to look like a parasite. The the three dimensional uh -huh. at least. Uh huh. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> You're ahead of the game. 
<laughs> well, <laughs> well, I want to say thank you to you both. And I hope that I'll see both of you on the call Friday. Oh, yeah, yeah hopefully. Okay, and sorry for being a wee bit late, but great, great to get talking to you. All the very best, Susan. Cheerio. Bye.